after conducting my tensile test by placing household appliance items on my bridge until it could no longer support the weight, I was now ready to create my free body diagram. Now, I was able to conduct the tensile test by placing household appliance items, but before I would place them on top of the bridge, I would weigh them to record the weight, and then if it would handle it, I would go on to the next number of weight until it was no longer able to handle it, until I got to 0.28 kilograms for the first bridge's um, ability to hold weight. So that's where I marked it down as 0.28 kilograms. Um, on the slide, it's gonna say bridge two calculations, but this is actually for bridge one, which is the skinny bridge. So the skinny regular bridge is bridge one. So we start off with that one and on the top, we could see the dimensions. And so, and then on the right, on the left hand, I'm sorry, you could see the free body diagram. So if you look on the left, you'll see the free body diagram of the first bridge with the regular straws. And if you look in the middle, you could see the a red arrow pointing down that's the max force that was acting upon the bridge which was 0.28 kilograms which was the max amount of load it was able to handle um so once we found out that we were able to get our reactional forces our moment our bending moment and our shear stress so we can then dive into the numbers so our 0.28 kilograms was our maximum load so we start off by getting the um, the reactional forces to start off the reactional forces we get the mass of the bridge which was 0.113 kilograms plus the amount of load it was holding 0.28 kilograms and we do that times 9.81 which is the unit of gravity and acceleration and with that we get 3.855 and from there we could solve the other equations so then we go on so we add our 0 0.393 which is the total mass of the bridge with the weight of the bridge and the total mass it was able to hold and then we divide that by the length giving us our 1.474 kilograms mass okay and then from there we are able to get the 3855 and divide it by two because we're going to assume that since the bridge is perfectly constructed and evenly distributed that the loads are going to be equal so reaction force one and reaction force two should be equal so after after getting the the total force the total weight of the bridge and doing it times the unit of acceleration of gravity which is 9.81 and we get 3.855 we're then able to divide it by two to get our two reaction of forces and that comes out to 1.927 n and that will be our reactional forces for R1 and R2 since they're evenly distributed. And that's how we get 1.927. Now to get the maximum moment, we go back to the total weight of the bridge, which is the weight in kilograms and the weight of kilograms it was able to hold, which is 113 kilograms and 0.28 kilograms. And we add that together to get 0 0.393 kilograms. With that, we divide it by our length. And with that, we get 1.474. And with that, we can, we can multiply it times length to the second power divided by A, which goes for the A panels. And with that, we get 0 0.0131 maximum moment. And that will be the maximum moment. Now, in order to get the, the shear stress, we first start off by getting the moments of inertia for the truss bridge. And with that, we get the height to the second power minus the length to the second power. And then with that, we get 0 0.08885. And with that, we are able to plug in the numbers with the distance from the shear center. So with that, we could we are able to find out the distance from the center to get the max shear stress. And we're plugging in the numbers and we are able to get the, the shear stress of 4.9 pascals by plugging in the numbers. And that's what we get for the first bridge. Now it does say bridge two calculations, but again, that is for bridge number one, which is the skinny bridge, which is the one that you see the first videos on. Let me know for any questions. Thank you.